This is the continuation of the last episode. In the previous episode, we derived this result. The magnetic field due to a wire which has a finite length and the angle subtended by the two extreme lines are alpha and beta. In this episode, the question is, what if you have an infinitely long wire? So the wire that you see over here starts at point A, that's the lower end, and extends all the way up to infinity. And we're gonna choose two points, point P, which is somewhere in between. So you can think of that as, you know, somewhere um, very close to the midpoint of the wire. And point Q, which is far away, and, and it's very, very close to the end, the edge of the wire, okay? So you can imagine this wire to be extremely long, the length of the wire to be way bigger than the value of A. And in that case, you can imagine P is somewhere, somewhere in close to, in the vicinity of, you know, midpoint of the wire, and Q is in the vicinity of the edge of the wire. In this case, I'm gonna use this formula we derived yesterday, <laughs> not yesterday, in the last video, to find out the expression over here. So let's do P first, okay? So at P, to use this formula, I have to draw lines. So I have to draw two lines. Well, line that starts from here, it goes all the way there, okay? So let's draw two lines from here to there. So one line from here to here. Wait, it doesn't stop there. It goes, it goes all the way to infinity. So it, so it can't be here. It has to keep on going all the way, all the way to infinity. If it goes all the way to infinity, this line is gonna go somewhat this way. And similarly, if it's gonna go to infinity from this side, again, notice it doesn't end here. This is infinitely long in between. It has to go all the way to infinity. So it goes somewhat like this. So can you now understand what's going to happen to alpha and beta? Look, here is alpha. This is alpha and this is beta. Notice that alpha and beta are pretty much 90 degrees. And for that reason, we can now approximate this and say this is pretty much equal to mu naught divided by 4 pi into i divided by a times sine 90 plus sine 90 and that's going to be that's going to be mu 0 divided by 4 pi times this is just 2 sine times this 1 1 plus 1 is 2 2 i divided by a and that uses mu naught i divided by 2 pi a that's the answer okay that turns out to be the expression for the magnetic field at point P. Okay, let's quickly do point Q. This is just a practice. I don't want you to remember this equation. In fact, you know what? If anything, try to remember this equation because deriving that is a little bit tedious work. If you can't remember the equation, that's okay. Derive it all the time. I always encourage derivations. So let's do point Q quickly. <clears throat> if we were to do the same exercise for point Q, that is draw lines and calculate the value of alpha and beta, then one line, just like just like what we did with point P, one line is gonna go all the way over there somewhere. And that makes angle alpha 90 degrees. So the angle alpha is going to be 90. This is, oops, this is 90. Now the question is, what is, what is angle beta? We'll have to draw a line, to draw a line from that point P to the other edge, that's over here. Oh, what's that angle? That angle is zero. Can you see that? I can't even draw that. Let's design this line. That angle is zero. Okay? So, that immediately tells us from this that alpha is 90 degrees and beta is zero. And so, if you substitute in, again, the same equation, you get a 90 here, you get a zero here. So, we'll end up with mu naught divided by 4 pi i divided by a into sine 90 I'm just going to substitute as 1 plus sine 0 which is just 0 and that's going to be equal to mu naught this is the magnetic field at point Q mu naught into i divided by 4 pi a ta-da done now notice that the magnetic field BQ is actually half of the magnetic field at point P. So this is divided by 2. So this is telling us that as you go farther and farther away from the midpoint, you go farther and farther away towards the edge, the magnetic field dies out and becomes lower and lower value. And I think that makes pretty much, that makes a lot of sense. 
because the farther you go the smaller is the contribution that you're getting from these dy vectors because they're going to go farther and farther and farther away and because of that the magnetic field becomes very very tiny at this point so the magnetic field weakens and if you were to go even further down then you can convince yourself if you try to if you have followed this then you can convince that if you go further down that is you go further away from the wire the magnetic field becomes even weaker okay when i say further down i'm saying go along the length of the wire don't change the value of a the distance the perpendicular distance from the wire remains the same but you you go along that particular you go parallel you travel parallel to the wire farther and farther away from the midpoint weaker and weaker becomes the magnetic field okay so see you next time